Today's video is all about secrets. The secret to longevity, a secret child, and a child's secret foray into theft. No kids for me, thanks. It's time for another child free grab bag where we just hang out for a little while and I talk to y'all about some random, mostly unrelated things that I think y'all will find entertaining. And one very quick thing before we get started, there will not be a new video next week on April 2nd. I will be back on April 9th. Other than that, I'm glad you're here. I'm excited to share these stories with y'all. So let's just get into it. First up, the secret to longevity. So this happened back in February, but it's just too wholesome for me to not share with y'all. And y'all know I'm a sucker for any story that completely defies the whole, oh, have fun dying alone and miserable bullshit. So this lovely lady is Hurlda Sinhouse. You might have seen her floating around the internet. She recently turned 113 years old, and I'm going to read a little news article about her. Hurlda Sinhouse, who may be the state's oldest resident, was born the same year as Lucille Ball and Ronald Reagan. William Howard Taft was president and construction on Fenway Park was just beginning. She's a lovely person and very kind and very giving, very inspirational, said Margaret Robinson, a friend of Sinhouse's, absolutely a wonderful person. Robinson said she and the birthday girl still go out every month to get manicures and pedicures, and I love that so much. <laughs> Surrounded by loved ones at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital Needham, Aunt Hurlda was honored with a special cane given to the oldest resident of her hometown of Wellesley. Born in West Virginia, Sinhouse moved to Massachusetts at a young age. I'm so happy, Sinhouse said on turning 113 years old, it's awesome. A fan of the slot machine, she said she's looking forward to her next trip to the casino. As for the secret to her longevity, Sinhouse credits one thing that she said contributed to a more stress-free life I didn't have children, she said, laughing. She seems great, and I don't know how anyone could really argue or dispute her logic. Like, even if someone believes that having children would bring so much value to their lives, it's still gonna bring stress. It just is what it is, you know? And long-term stress has been proven to be very detrimental to one's health. So it tracks, it makes sense. There's logic there. And I'm gonna assume that after 113 years, Miss Inhouse is wise and Miss Inhouse knows what's up. And I bet she has so many cool stories to tell. I would love to just sit and talk to her. And obviously I would not be doing my job if I did not mention clearly, She's not alone. She has hobbies and activities that she enjoys. And it seems to me that she's made an impact on many people throughout her lives and none of those people came from her loins. It's almost like you don't have to have children to have a full, happy, content life. Next up, a secret child. <laughs> so the newest season of Love is Blind recently ended. And if y'all don't know, you're about to find out that a trashy Netflix dating show is it's my guilty pleasure i just love them okay and if you don't know what love is blind if you've never seen it before essentially the whole idea is these people meet in pods as they call them um, they're in little secluded rooms and they can hear each other and talk to each other but they cannot see each other okay they have to go on dates and decide if they want to get engaged to these people or this person whatever once they get engaged, they finally get to see each other and then they go through this whole process of like a vacation with the other couples and there's drama and then they go to live together and there's drama. <laughs> and at the end of the experiment, they have to decide at the altar, wedding altar, if they're going to actually get married. So all of this stuff happens very fast, but I love watching it. So this season of Love is Blind started off with us being introduced to Jessica, who is 28 and has a 10 year old daughter. She immediately let it be known that she was nervous to tell these prospective husbands, these dates, that she had a daughter. Vanessa Lachey, one of the co-hosts, asks Jessica, do you think you're gonna tell the men right away or are you going to wait? And Jessica says, I wrote this down so I could quote her. I want to give people a chance to like get to know me individually first because even though I'm a mother and it's the most important thing to me, it doesn't define me. I feel like I'll just know when it's time to tell somebody. And immediately, I don't like Jessica <laughs> because the time to tell somebody 
when you are wanting a serious, committed, long-term relationship with that person, the time to tell them is right away. I think it's fine that she wanted people to get to know her beyond being a mother. And I'm certainly not suggesting that she needed to go in there guns a blazing, you know, sharing intimate details about her daughter, or sharing photos and all these things about her daughter. Like, keep your daughter private, but to not even mention the daughter at all, that was wild to me. Also, she says that being a mother doesn't define her. That's fine. It might not define you as a woman or as a person, but it certainly is heavily going to impact your, your lifestyle, your finances, your obligations and responsibilities, and just your day-to-day -day existence is going to be heavily impacted by having a child, by being a mother. Whether it defines you or not, it's still a huge impact on your life, right? At least if you're a present and attentive parent, which Jessica claimed to be and seemed to be from what we saw, who knows? Anyways, she connected with this guy named Jimmy, okay? And obviously she did not tell him right away. She waited until a few dates in after they were both emotionally invested in this relationship. Jessica finally tells him because she said herself, there's so many things we can't talk about because I haven't told him that I'm a mother yet. And I'm like, yes, because it actually is a big deal that you should have said from the very beginning. Maybe it does define your life a little bit more than you'd like to admit. She tells Jimmy he wasn't immediately like outwardly turned off by the idea, but like a child definitely changes the dynamic, especially when you didn't even realize there was a child involved. He said, it's a lot to take in, but we definitely have a connection. And I have to wonder how he would have responded had there not been cameras and Netflix producers around at the time, <laughs> because I, I'm speculating that if it was real life and he had met her, even though she is very pretty, I feel like when she told him that, he would have been like, oh, well, it's not for me, sorry. <laughs> you know, but because he was on the show, he, he tried to be like nice guy about it and didn't immediately break up with her. Spoiler alert, the next episode, he said he was nervous about where he would fit in, which I think is a valid concern. Their next date, Jessica was crying about missing her daughter. Uh, so yet again, it's such a small deal that you didn't need to mention it right away, but it was clearly impacting Jessica emotionally and it was impacting Jimmy and Jessica's time together. So yet again, it is a big deal. <laughs> so to make the long story short, Jessica wanted Jimmy to express his feelings for her and like really just tell her where he was at with it, I guess. And he didn't want to do that because he wasn't 100% sure. It was all just very like, if you like her or don't, just tell her she wants to know. It was very annoying. <laughs> it was like, just come out with it, you know? Um, but he wouldn't say anything and she needed more from him than that. And she said to this other lady that his indecision wouldn't work once her daughter was in the picture. And I'm like, yet again, <laughs> a child's a, a huge factor in this situation, clearly, clearly. <laughs> Jimmy eventually broke up with her and she did not take it well. Now, remember, they got together and broke up without ever having laid eyes upon one another. It's all very, it's all very convoluted and dramatic, I love it. Jessica got very upset and said that he would choke when he realized what he was missing out on, something to that effect. I think Jimmy knows what he was missing out on though, right? Like. I think he realized like, I've never met this person. I've never seen this person. I've only known her for a week, uh, if that. She has a child. So if I go through with this and marry her, not only am I in a brand new relationship, a brand new marriage with someone I've only known a month, but now I have to be stepdad too. That's a lot. And I don't blame him. Maybe if they had met out in the real world, maybe he would have liked her because he could have gone at a much slower pace. But with Love is Blind, it's, it's one thing after the other. There's no time to waste. <laughs> For anyone wondering, uh, Jimmy picked another woman and did not get married to her either. Jimmy was honestly like, he annoyed me during the season. He didn't do much for me. He was just, whatever. At the reunion, Jessica was there and they announced that Jessica is going to take part in Perfect Match, which is another one of Netflix dating shows. In my opinion, a trashier Netflix, one of the trashier ones, in my opinion. Um, so I'm curious to see how Netflix and the producers are going to like 
dramatize this whole kid having thing because now she can't hide that she has a kid. So I'm curious to see how they're going to deal with that in Perfect Match. If you're curious, also let me know. Um, I'm going to watch it either way. If you want me to talk about it in a video, let me know. <laughs> but um, I just think that people who hide the fact that they have a kid are jerks. Like people who do that, if like I said, if you're trying to get into like a committed relationship with someone, if you don't tell them all of the pieces that are at play here, you're not allowing the other person to make an informed decision about whether or not they want to date you. And, and that's the crux of the problem for me. I just feel like you should have all the information that is pertinent to a, to a person, you know, to, to make the best decision. You can't hide something as, as life altering and consuming as having a child from someone and then get upset when that makes them reconsider or makes them have different feelings. Like that's just wild. Anyway, like I said, if you want more of the Netflix dating shows, I love them and will be happy to talk to you about them. <laughs> so let me know. Up next, a child secret theft. Now this is an actual personal story that happened to my husband that he is letting me tell y'all. So this happened to my husband, Shelton, not too long ago. He works in retail sales. And the other week, a family of four came in. Mom, dad, two boys, he said they were around ages 10 to 13, somewhere in that range. So the parents were shopping and were working with another salesman. And Shelton said that he noticed these two boys just like making laps around the store, messing around in electronics. I think he said something about uh, they were messing around with a massage chair, something like that, and their parents were off in La La Land, uh, not paying attention to what their kids were doing, couldn't care less. The couple did not buy anything that day. They left. And then a little while later, one of the employees realized, they went over into the electronics section, realized that there's an iPad missing. Where the fuck did it go? So they watched the security footage. Turns out, one of those kids somehow deactivated the security thing that keeps the iPads attached to the display and stole it along with a PC gaming mouse of some sort. The funniest part to me was the security footage, okay? They watched the security footage to find out who it was that stole. They said they watched the kids walk around the store multiple times. The cameras got a clear view of both of their faces. When they realized that they were gonna be able to steal the iPad, one of the kids put his hood up as if that was gonna help. And that just really cracks me up. And then they watched the kid proceed to shove the iPad down his pants and, you know, walk off with it. So because of the price of the merchandise, because it was so high, um, remember they sold an iPad and a gaming mouse, so I guess because it was over a certain amount, probably like a thousand dollars, but I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. Because it was so expensive, it was considered a felony. A felony. So because their parents could just not be tasked with watching over them, and these kids obviously have no moral qualms about stealing, they've done committed a felony. And now it's their parents' issue to have to deal with. So the managers decided to call the parents and let them know what happened. The parents, I think the same day, came back to the store with their kids with the stolen merchandise. One of the managers sat the kids down and had like a come to Jesus meeting with them or something. And Shelton said that one of the kids, I think the older one, maybe tried to blame the younger one or vice versa. It, they were both just lying their asses off trying to get out of it. But then when the security footage was brought up, they just both went pale and accepted their fate. <laughs> the store did not press charges because the merchandise was brought back. But I was just blown away by the audacity of the kids, the complete lack of awareness on the parents' end, and how silly it was to walk around the whole store with your face just out and then cover it at the very end and think that's gonna work. I just can't. But hopefully those parents learn to parent worth a shit and pay attention to their kids. Hopefully after this, those kids never want to steal again and learned a valuable lesson. Uh, 
hopefully they learned it before they get older and people stop giving so much grace to them because if they keep up, they're gonna steal from the wrong person or the wrong business and get arrested. So honestly, from these three stories today, we have found three more reasons to add to our ever-growing list of reasons not to have kids. One, less stress. Miss Sinhouse said it. it, she knows what's up. Two, kids complicate your dating life. Just ask Jessica. <laughs> and three, your kid might decide they wanna commit a felony and it's gonna fall back on you to have to deal with. And I'm just not here for any of that. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope y'all found these entertaining. Let me know what you thought about any or all of these stories down below. Like the video if you did in fact like the video. I very much appreciate it. Subscribe if you like the vibes here. I hope you're having a good day whenever, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.